uh, uh, excellent. Um, what do you therefore make of the defiance of Polycrates and in his representation, the wider synod of Asia Minor um, in defying the, the rule of Pope Victor in their liturgical practice on Easter, where he said those exact same things. He's not afraid of his threats. He searched the tradition of the script and the scriptures, and he must serve God rather than men. What do you make of that defiance? Irenaeus, along with many others, rebuked Victor because it seemed that he had cut such churches off from the unity of the church for so trifling a cause. Eusebius witnesses the same thing. But the fact that Victor changed his sentence, we read nowhere. And even if Victor had changed his sentence, Calvin would gain nothing from that. We would say that the same power whereby Victor bound the Asians, he absolved them. Next, the rebuke of Irenaeus and others does not diminish, but rather more increases the force of our argument. For in the same measure whereby there were many displeased by the sentence of Victor, so they could more easily condemn, or rather more preferably excommunicate Victor, if they thought he was one from the number of bishops, rather than the head and judge of all. But in reality, there was not anyone who taught that the sentence was void, or thought that Victor must be condemned or excommunicated. Nor was there anyone who warned him lest he might exceed his limits, and lest he might judge those not subject to him. In fact, they ought to have warned him if Victor truly was not the judge of all. Moreover, they reckoned Victor did what he could, not what he ought. Their words sound thus in Eusebius, quote, Their letters are extant, in which they more bitterly rebuked Victor, as if consulting him that it was unprofitable, to what was fitting for the church, end quote. Moreover, this must be observed, that although Irenaeus and others then thought that Victor had acted imprudently, nevertheless, really he acted very prudently, as the whole church judged afterward. For one from those particular authors of that opinion on the celebration of Easter with the Jews was Blastus, who in the very manner, little by little, wanted to introduce Judaism as Tertullian writes at the end of De Prescriptionis Contra Hereticos. Quote, Blastus wanted to secretly introduce Judaism. Indeed, he said Pascha should be kept in no other way than according to the law of Moses in the fourteenth day of the month. End quote. Here, however, Blastus began to sow his heresy at Rome in the time of Pope Victor as Eusebius witnesses. Therefore, because Pope Victor saw that truth on Easter was not only a diversity of observance, but bore the tallow of heresy, nay more, of Judaism itself, he reckoned the time was ripe to oppose it. Therefore, the fathers of the Council of Nicaea approved of the judgment of Victor, as is clear from Eusebius, and thereafter, those who thought the contrary were held as heretics and called quartodecimans, as is clear from Epiphanius and Augustine. End quote.